Welcome to the first day of the 11th Virtual Roundtable Conference, Web Conference 2020. And uh, I'm here with Lane Marshall, very delighted to have her to run the first workshop ever at the Virtual Roundtable. <laughs> and she's, I think she spent a couple of weeks preparing this one. So I'm very delighted that you 11 participants are here because that's just the right number. She said she was hoping on 15, but she was, you know, uh, unless if possible, it's 14 in the attendance here. And we're going, all going to be actively involved in the session. Let me tell you a bit about Helene, but whilst I'm reciting her bio to you, would you mind in the text chat, just leave and drop a little note, a one-liner. What's your background? Where you located? Are you a teacher? What do you teach? Which target group? If you could write in the text chat just one line about yourself so that Lane can get to know you. And I will tell you more about Lane. Lane is a, she has a PhD. She's Professor of Education and Director of Language Education Programs at Long Island University Hudson Campus, where she teaches courses in TESOL and multicultural education, primarily online using the Sofla model, Sofla model, Sofla model, synchronous online flipped learning approach, Sofla. Her research interests include leveraging instructional technology in education, culturally responsive and sustaining education, and non-traditional approaches to grammar instruction. Her most recent book, just published, is Meeting the Needs of Slave, a Guide for Educators. We're very delighted that Elaine made her second appearance um, within a matter of, I think, two weeks for previously for the Learning Technology SIG when I was able to enjoy her presentation and said, this is of interest to the virtual round table. This know-how is untapped. And I convinced her to demonstrate it to us, not just talk about it, demonstrate it to us because experiencing is learning. Thank you so much for doing this with me, Len. I'm very delighted. Over to you. Well, thank you for uh, welcoming me. And uh, I have mixed feelings because I've never done this workshop before. So <laughs> I'm used to teaching this exact way, but to my classes at Long Island University. And I'm not going to teach you grammar, and I'm not going to teach you second language acquisition, and I'm not going to teach you multicultural perspectives. So I had to revamp this and uh, come up with something that would make sense to teach you but using the model that I use and have been using now for five years with my students, uh, with my students at uh, LIU. Uh, so I've developed this model and I kind of gave it a name, SOFLA, uh, because I believe in flipped learning and I also believed in online learning. Um, originally, I started flipping my in-person classes and teaching online traditionally and then I realized I could flip my online classes, and that's when everything clicked into place. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is take a look at uh, the detailed description of the workshop. So I've put here uh, time frames about how long I think things will take, but of course that depends on how everybody is reacting and what we're doing and how many people there are. It looks like it's a small group of the workshop. So the first piece is to present this detailed plan to you with the time frames of uh, what we're going to be doing. And we are sort of starting late, about 20 minutes late. So in my mind, um, we'll end about 20 minutes after. This was planned as a 90 minute workshop. The reason it's 90 minutes is to give you time in breakouts to really do some work together. Um, when I teach my classes, I give them time in the breakout room because when they first get there, they want to find out who's there and, get, and they kind of do a little chit chat. And I know that happens, but I want them to get the work done. So I give them extended time. Uh, in any case, um, we start by asking the question we always ask in a flipped learning setting. We're going to start by asking you if you did the pre-work. So I'm going to ask you that. That's step one. 
Step one of SOFLA is the pre-work. So we're going to do step two in a minute. Now, the way you're going to do it is put a green check. So please put a green check. And if you're new to, if you're new to uh, Adobe, you go up to the little person who has the hand up, hand up. And when the person has the hand up, you put a green check. You use a down arrow and you find agree, which is a green check. So find the agree. Uh, the raise hand means you have a question. So that's okay. We're doing a little Adobe Connect stuff. <laughs> okay. So just change it to a green check if you did the pre-work. All right. So doing the pre-work tells me you've done step one. And normally, we're not going to do it today because it's a demonstration, but normally I would say, please go back and do the pre-work. And then we would go on to step two while you do the pre-work because it's very important to do uh, the pre-work. And what I was going to do um, was if there had been a large number, I would have said only the people who did the pre-work are going to be in the little fishbowl. But we'll, we'll allow you all to be in the fishbowl anyway because it's a small group. Um, it's important not to be punitive about the pre-work when you do SOFLA, but you have to insist that people do it. Uh, it you have to be firm about the pre-work. Right? It's important uh, because your entire uh, session with the students is based on their having done it and giving you uh, data that you've downloaded. So I am looking now at the results of the pre-work and I can see how well you all did. And actually, you, those of you who completed it did very well. Got, you got everything correct, which is great. But what I do is with my students, if they do have issues with the pre-work, that tells me what I need to do to prepare my lesson. So I've pre-prepared for you. But when you do SOFLA, you want to make everything uh, that they do for pre-work do uh, ahead of time and leave yourself time to prepare your lesson based on the results of the pre-work. That's the whole philosophy of this model. Uh, so you don't plan way ahead of time what you're going to teach. You plan after you look at the results. It's a very this kind of model, okay? That's important. And they, look, they start getting the rhythm of it. Okay, so the steps we're going to do are the sign-in activity. And then we're going to I'll show you the agenda for the workshop, which is we're going to go right through all the steps of SOFLA. We might abbreviate some of them, but what I need to have you do is go through all the eight steps so that you get the feel of it. Um, then uh, after I show you the agenda, we'll do the whole group application, which is part of the model. Then we'll do the breakout groups. Uh, we'll share out from the breakouts. Then we're going to do the preview, explore, and discovery piece of the model, uh, which gets you ready for what you're going to do after this session. And then I'm going to give you the actual assignment, which is the pre-work. So it's a circle. You'll see that a little bit later. And then I'm going to ask you what I ask all of my students to do at the end is to reflect and wrap up. So we're going to go through all of this uh, that's on the chart. Okay. So uh, this was just our welcome page. Now we're going to go we're going to go into our sign-in. So our sign-in activity is to give for everyone to, on the whiteboard, you hit the T, the letter T, to write. And if you've never done Adobe, I understand there's a learning curve here, but I feel as though I wanted to do this in Adobe because it's where I teach. I don't teach in Zoom. I go to meetings or chit chat with friends, but I don't teach in there because I have a lot of moving parts. So, um, so, if you look at the uh, sign-in, it says, give an example of one activity you've used in an online setting, can be synchronous or asynchronous, that exemplifies the learning culture pillar. And if you did the pre-work, you know all about the learning culture pillar. So that was what the pre-work was. So if you did not actually do the pre-work, you may have a little trouble with the sign-in, which is, again, part of the model. I try to make the sign-in draw from the pre-work. And the entire pre-work was about the learning culture. So you want to see, all right, you don't see a T. On the left side, on the left side, there's a black bar. I'm trying to monitor the chat. 
On the left side, there's a black bar and it has tools. You should see the tools. Uh, I asked them to read the board. So it's like sometimes in the classroom, you say, read the room. I say, read the board. And I say, take a look at the board and what do you notice? And usually they'll notice patterns or they'll comment on what they see from another student. And they can use, they can use their uh, chat to do that or they can use their microphone. Again, I don't have very large classes, more like this size. And so we have a conversation about the board. Uh, usually, I'm not the one that does the talking, they do it, okay? So, um, so we don't have enough up there right now, but if we had a few more, I would say to you, what are your comments on the board, all right? And then the other piece that I wanna mention that goes on this layout that we have here is the agenda. I always give an agenda to the students so they know what we're gonna do that day. And uh, I even do this, uh, in the classroom, the physical in-person classroom, I put it up on a flip chart with markers. <laughs> so that's what this is. So we have the sign-in activity, the whole group, the breakouts, the sharing, the discovery, the assignment, and reflection. So that's the agenda. And I, I just put it on this first layout so they can plan and they know what's coming. All right. What I do in class, actually, every now and then someone's like on a train or or somewhere where they're on their mobile app and they don't really feel like they can get to the whiteboard. So they put it in the chat and the other students copy and paste it. So could I ask you to do that? If you see that someone put their response in the chat, not just now, but during the whole workshop, uh, if the little angels, if you could copy and paste their contributions so they feel that they have represented themselves on the board, even if they weren't able to on their own, we wanna always help. That's one of my activities, Helping Hand. You'll be reading about that. No, you're not gonna be reading about it. You're gonna watch a video lesson about it uh, for your assignment, okay. I tend to say reading, but I'm doing video lessons more now. Okay, uh, so now there are enough things on the board. So I'd like to, uh, some comments from you. So let's just take two or three minutes to hear what you have to say. Read the board and then make a comment. You can make a comment orally, which is fine. Um, you have, uh, you can turn on your webcams. I think you're enabling, yeah, you should be able to have turn. You can turn on your webcams and talk if you have a comment on what's in the board or you can comment in the chat. Whatever you notice, about, tell us what you think about the board. Are there, do you notice something about the board? Is there one thing there that really excites you that you think is an example of a learner-centered pillar, a learner-centered pillar. And also, I should note that we can move things around to make the board a little easier to read. And do we have speak. people who want to comment? Can I speak? So mm -hmm. someone seems to be responding uh, whether they've done these things. It's more of a brainstorming activity, the sign-in. So everyone brainstorms, and then what I do is I save it and I upload it to our platform. All the sign-in activities are preserved for the entire semester. So they can go back and they can see for each sign-in what it was that they contributed. Can I just ask one question, please? Sure. I mean, I was not in a position to learn what the cultural pillar is all about. And I'm wondering now that I would like to be part of this, um, is it wrong for Sofla thinking that to actually repeat in class what the video lesson was all about, Travis, in case somebody... Uh, well, first of all, um, as I said uh, before, that the, pre the Sofla will not work as a model unless you build up the expectation for doing the pre-work. The minute you reteach, the minute you summarize, they say they they say in their own mind because we're human beings and we say, well, she's going to tell me what it is. I won't, I'll be able to do the signing because she'll summarize it. I don't need to see it. No, I don't want that. You know, I want them to experience the pre-work. It's really important. So if the first few, we're only going to meet once right now. This is a conference, but if we were going to meet every week for five or six weeks, then by week two or three, you'd all be doing the pre-work. And I think it's really, really important. Now, there is a caveat, which is 
um, if you see that very few did the, the pre-work or they bombed it or whatever, um, then your sign-in wouldn't be this sign-in. I wouldn't give this kind of a sign-in. I'd give a different sign-in. This sign-in was designed for people who really did do the pre-work. So if, if, I, if I knew there were issues and some people hadn't, you know, enough people hadn't done it, I would do a very innocent sign-in. Like I can even, as you know, those of you who've seen my other webinars, I do affective sign-ins. Like I, I did a sign-in one night that said, everybody put how the COVID-19 um, crisis has affected you professionally per or personally, and everyone filled the board instantly. And that was a very different kind of sign-in. So the sign-in doesn't even have to be about the pre-work. In this case, I wanted it to be because this is a conference and a demo, and I wanted you to see that your first choice is to draw from the pre-work, all right? Another option, so that's an option. Um, another option is to have a student who did the pre-work give some kind of a summary in the chat to the other students to get them on board. So in this case, if there's somebody who did the pre-work, who wants to share some of what they got, but I would never do it because that's the point. I've already done the video lesson. I've taught the culture, uh, the learning culture pillar, right? So if somebody would like to, uh, that would be something that you could do, okay. Uh, any other comments? I see these are great ideas. Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, these are all learning culture activities. Online tandem learning from different cultures. These are great ideas that we're collecting here. So you see when you brainstorm during a sign-in, you do collect strong contributions. Okay. And I see in the chat, people are giving suggestions of tools. And one of the things I stress here is that I am not about specific tools. I'm totally open for you to tell each other which tools you think would work for which aspects of SOFLA. I'm focused exclusively on the, the pedagogy, the steps. And speaking of which, we need to move on. So let's go to the next step. And the next step is whole group application. So in this step, what I've done is I've presented for you SOFLA as a cycle. And if you see in the upper left, this is the cycle of SOFLA. And the green is the pre-work. Because if you miss that one piece, the cycle falls apart. So you can see here that um, we have the sign-in after the pre-work down at the bottom, sign-in. Then the whole group, which is where we are now then the breakouts, then sharing from the breakouts, then discovery and explore for the next lesson, then giving the assignment or pre-work, telling them what it is, having them reflect, then they do the pre-work. So it seems to me it's steps, but it's also a cycle. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is thinking about this SOFLA as you understand these steps. What we're looking for, and to this I, have, I nod to David Rosen, and you can see in the uh, web links, which I'll give you a lot of web links today to, uh, to different uh, sources and people, um, he's the one who has suggested that our approach to online learning, when we're thinking to ourselves, oh no, how do I do this? Um, one of our approaches is to think about the equivalencies, so what you do in person, how would you do that same activity if you were going to do it uh, online? And the other piece is innovations right below where you may be doing things you've never even done before because you're online. New things in teaching, new kinds of activities. Also, you need to consider both the advantages and the limitations of online learning and teaching. So what I was uh, going to ask you to do is, again, this is a whiteboard, so you can write up here, if you look at the different pieces of the SOFLA model, think about what they're equivalent to in an in-person situation, and also think about 
what you think is an innovation, what, what are the advantages, what are the limitations. Okay, so this would be where the whole class fills in the chart and I sit back. I observe, I give feedback, I might suggest something, but it's not my activity. It's hands off. This is the students together. And they usually talk and work together as a group and fill the boxes. So the idea is that you're going to look at the steps and think to yourself, wow, I'll give you an example, reflection. Hmm. So at the end of SOFLA, students reflect. Hmm, how am I going to, is that an innovation? Well, no, you probably ask your students to reflect. How do you ask them to reflect in person? So it might be an equivalency. So does everybody get it? So you're, spe you're specifically looking at the eight steps of SOFLA and not just in general online, which is what uh, David Rosen was more of general online, and I'm applying it specifically to SOFLA. Uh, and also the innovations is something I added. Whoop, what happened there? We lost our model. How did that happen? Did you all lose the model? Uh, I need you to see that. It looks like we lost the model. I'm going to go get it back. Uh, I'm going to go get it back because it's here. I've already uploaded it. It should pop right in. Okay. There we go. All right. So, again, this is a demo. So, we may not spend as much time. We may not fill it completely. But see if you can think of something in SOFLA that's completely new for you or something that reminds you of something you already do in your teaching. And can you think of any advantages of any of the steps of SOFLA? So breakout groups, don't you do groups? Think about that. You do group work. Of course, the groups, if it's in person, you hear all these groups and you walk around the room. Guess what? There's an advantage. When you guys go in a breakout room in a few minutes, you're going to go into a breakout room and you will not hear each other. <laughs> and I can bop from room to room. So there's an advantage right there. Just do, I'm giving you examples. Okay. So how are we doing? Okay. So no equivalencies? I'm sure you can think of some. And again, if somebody uh, puts something in the chat that... Uh, belongs in one of the boxes, you can use E and we'll pop it in for you, or one of the other participants will pop it in for you where it goes, E-A-I-L, and someone will put it in for you. If you're not, if you're on the mobile or if there's some reason you're not able to use the whiteboard, uh, just put it in the chat with the letter that's telling us where it goes, and we'll put it in there for you. Helping hand. And your host needs more water. And I should say that I'm doing a lot more talking than I would in my normal classes because you haven't done this sort of thing before, but my students do it routinely. They know the drill. It's a very different activity each time, but they know that there's a sign-in, there's a whole class application. Okay. Lynn, I will really have to stop you a little bit. Let them think a little bit about it. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm talking too much, right? Okay. No, I get it. And do you actually read the comments of the students out loud, or do you comment on the comments, or do you what do you do with them? Well, once they're finished and they've done the board. I do something similar to the sign-in, and I say, okay, let's take a look. What do you notice? And then I might say, who would like to speak to the advantages? Who would like to speak to, you know, so we, we kind mm -hmm. of revisit the ideas once they're up there. Okay. So it's a okay. discussion, a class discussion. Will after we that. also do this after this? Because I find it very interesting what's, like, written on the board. But to listen to you and to read the comments on the board seems to be... A little bit beyond my capabilities at the moment, at least. <laughs> um, 
I was saying that uh, I, I would like to what sort of read the comments on the board, but you've been talking, so I've been torn between reading the comments and listening to you. Uh, not, yes, well, not that I want right. to stop you, but... So, what do you do with the comments afterwards? Shall we uh, talk about it afterwards? Or? We'll stay silent for a moment. Um, there's one comment on the board which I would like to bring to your attention. Is that true? You can't physically interact with students, which can be difficult with young learners. What do you all think of that? Agree? Disagree? It's on a limitation, and there are limitations. Do you, Hello. Do you disagree Kirsty. with that limitation? Kirsty. Anyone? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, no, it's my comment. And, uh, yeah, yes. The, the thing is, I teach young learners, and when you teach young learners, very little kids, like three, four, five-year-olds, um, they you, you physically sit down with them yeah. and you play a game. And teaching that age group of children online is just completely different. So I, I don't have that that one-to-one -one contact with them. I don't like hand them a dice, or you know, or show you, you can show them a flashcard as I've seen today. That that uh, the Wonderworld um, uh, thing that was shown in the last. Um, it's brilliant. <laughs> Somebody did the pre-work with the Wonderwall. Okay, but, um, cool. Right. Uh, there are, I mean, I've been yeah. trying to develop online classes with, with my own learners and uh, basically uh, just acting like a clown in front of the, uh, <laughs> the, the webcam, but they can't actually, um, you know, interact with me in the same way. And that's, uh, I found that to be a bit of a disadvantage. That's all. Yes. Yes. So that is in general true of any online model. I mean, it's not specific to self-love, but it's a, it's a general truth of any online instruction. It is not in person. So if it's not in person, you're not physically with them. But webcams and gestures at least can go part way. And Sometimes they can have another person next to them that they are with and they can interact with them and you could be saying please do this or play this game with this other person so that's an option. The other thing is you can tell them to no, go get something that. and show it to the <laughs> class for show and tell. Um, there, yeah, you know, no, everybody go and right. get something and come back and we want to see what you have. So I have this. No, oh, what is this? It's a massage. Oh, so that's pretty physical. <laughs> and, you know, just little things like that. So you can make them feel a little bit more connected, but oh, actually no, reach out and touch. Like that, but, um, you, you have things like maybe um, if you have to prepare a class and uh, and they have to color something, you have to send it to them first. They, their parents have to print it off. It would have to be there physically in front of them or to make something. It's that you can't do things like that so much. Um, and you can't, because 
Yeah, for every parent to actually yes. print off that sometimes they don't have a printer yes. or they don't have the materials there, etc., etc. So that is a limitation. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, sure. Well, that's why there's a box for limitations because there are limitations, and I think people are get frustrated because they expect there won't be limitations, and it's important to realize there are limitations. That's a fact. And so we need to acknowledge them. No one who teaches online, I think, should purport to say, oh, it's, it's much better. There are these wonderful things you can do. There are limitations. There are also advantages. There are also limitations. There are also equivalencies. And it's not sure what equivalencies mean. Yes, I saw that. But I was wondering if the person had looked at the examples, which are great. So um, using PowerPoint, like we do face-to-face. -face. So the, instead of doing a PowerPoint live for your students, you take your PowerPoint and you turn it into a video lesson. So that's an equivalency. You still deliver your PowerPoint lecture. In fact, I'm working with a faculty member now. And he said, well, I'm used to doing my PowerPoints in class. What would I do now? And I said, you're going to record yourself doing your PowerPoints and make it pre-work for your class. And then when they come to class, they'll talk with you about the, the material that you um, showed them. That's an equivalency. Okay. So something that you do that you can do, it won't be the same way, but it will be an equivalent to what you've done before. Like if the students make posters, you can make digital posters. If it's a wonder wall, they can make a digital wonder wall. Those are equivalencies where you're not losing a lot. You're just doing it differently. So that's the idea. Okay. So uh, this will be made available to you. All of the boards, we need to move on, but because I'm doing a demo, I want to get through everything. But just this give you an idea of this step, which is step three, whole group application. Okay. Uh, and again, this is a board, and so it's preserved. I clean it up so the things don't, don't overlap. I change it around, and when I do post it, when you see it, it's going to look great, and you'll all see it. Okay. I'm not sure what SEND students are. It looks like an acronym. So if you could share the acronym with us, uh, that would be great. I also want to call your attention to David Rosen, who first introduced me to equivalencies, advantages, and limitations. And then I said to him, what about innovations? I think they're doing some things that I, I'm doing things I'd never did before. I call those innovations. He said, yeah, we'll add that. So that's that. And then I also have Nan Friedland, who's been doing uh, tremendous work um, in online learning using uh, SOFLA and also another model I developed, which is culturally responsive teaching through MALP, a uh, mutually adaptive learning paradigm for students with very little exposure to literacy and education. So if you have any of that population, uh, which many of us do today, uh, you should take a look at Nan's approach. And she does amazing things with WhatsApp. She's doing a lot of presentations. So uh, those are links, and I'll make them available to you afterwards also, but they're right there if you want to grab them. And then again, uh, we're going to go to the next step. And, uh, you know, with more time. My classes last two and a half hours and we take a break. Okay. Oh, you got a little look at the background when I switched. All right, next is breakouts. Send. So you're going to go into breakouts. Send. Uh, and the explanation of send is in the text chat. Sorry? Special education needs and disabilities. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I think that that's one of the most difficult groups to reach in an online setting uh, because a lot of the accommodations that you make, you may not be able to make in the same way, and that's not really my field, so I know much more about TESOL than I do about special education, um, although they intersect, obviously. Um, so uh, as far as using SOFLA uh, in general, I think that it could be adapted. Uh, and that would be an interesting direction. I'm hoping that people will become interested in SOFLA and use it as a, uh, as a structured approach to online teaching. And perhaps the folks in that field will grab onto it and adapt it in some way. It won't look the same. So that's a good point. For example, the breakouts might be handled slightly differently. Um, okay, now 
uh, you're going to go into a breakout. And what you're going to do in your breakout, the first thing I'm going to do is give you a poll. And what I'd like you to do, we're going to, I'm going to hide the big poll because we don't need it because we have a small group. So what I'd like you to do is uh, choose. If you were going to go into a group, which group would you like to go into for your breakout session? Um, so just answer the poll, and we'll see who we have here. So you're going to go into one of these rooms, and you're going to be with the group that you're with. So if you teach young learners, you'll be in a young learner group. If you teach business English, you'll be in the business English group. Uh, it doesn't really matter which group you go into because all the breakouts will look the same. What will, but the idea is that if you are with people that teach in the same context you do, you may uh, relate to each other and, and bond and get to know each other and everything doing the activity that you're going to do. So I'm going to explain the activity. Um, these are the IATEFL groups, and I arbitrarily picked ones that I thought. I didn't want to list all, I guess, 16 of them. Uh, so if I'm missing, if, could you put in the chat if there's something, there are a lot of people here from some group that I missed, uh, let me know. I mean, you can all get together in a room. Higher education, okay. Is that one of the groups? Okay. So if, if a bunch of you are higher ed, we can put you in a group. And this is where I'm going to need somebody to help me. So I'm going to broadcast the results. So we can have a learning technology group and a young learners group and a higher ed group for Anne and other people, okay? Uh, so before we go into breakouts, and this is what I always do with my students also, is um, I talk to you about what you're gonna do because one of the typical, and every teacher knows this, is they get in their group and they're like, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> so I, I'm like, let's be crystal clear. When you go into your groups, okay, we'll do a higher ed group, all right. Um, and if someone could help me, thank you so much for labeling the numbers and the rooms, okay. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to go uh, into your breakout room and there's going to be an option for a lesson, a language lesson. Obviously, we're all TESOL people here, which is great, right? Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to try and figure out how to flip the lesson. These are not flipped lessons. They may not even be online lessons, but they're TESOL. And you're supposed to think about what would I make synchronous and what would I make asynchronous, right? So the asynchronous, what am I going to have them do outside of the room, the virtual classroom, and what am I going to have to do when they're with me? What's more important that they do with me? Secondly, for the part with, with you, the instructor, thinking about what would you make a breakout activity and what would you make a full class activity? Then I'd like you to think about how do you build in accountability because that, that's a big uh, area that I had to teach myself is online building in accountability looks different. Uh, so that's an important aspect to think about. And then what's going to be individually accountable and group accountable. So you have to think about that. Sometimes I didn't ask you today, but I usually ask my students in the sign in to put their names. And very often in the whole group application also to put their names so that I can see who put what. Accountability. Also feedback. How do you build in feedback? Both from you as the instructor, which may or may not be private feedback. You know, in Adobe, we can have private chats. I can give feedback to a student privately right then and there after they do a presentation, which is really great. Uh, or peer feedback. and. Uh, in, um, I believe it was in, no, it, was, it wasn't in the, uh, the pre-work for this, but in one of my webinars, which you, you'll have the link to, I talk extensively about Shack, which is a, a structured peer feedback model of a colleague of mine. Okay. Uh, so after you, after you get into your group, you're going to take the whiteboard and jot notes. And then when we share out, you'll tell us what you did, what lesson you chose, and what you did with your lesson. So can we establish the groups? We have three groups. Is that correct? And we can put everybody in a group. So could you please, oh, this was a wonderful idea. Thank you, I guess, for giving me this idea. Um, would you please rename yourself and put the number in front of your name so we know where to put you. 
So if you want to go into learning technologies, put a number one in front of your name. Higher ed, put a number two. Young learners or teenagers, put number three. And I'm not sure L is just a general English language learner. So you, how do you rename yourself? You click on yourself, and then you go to the top of the attendees pod, and you'll have a choice, edit my info. And so you edit. It's like renaming in Zoom if you're used to that. You can rename yourself. You click on yourself. You go to the top of the attendees, and one of the options will be edit my info, or it might be it might pop over on the side too. Okay, so just put your number, what room you'd like to go to, and we will send you there. Now there's one more thing I want to show you that you're going to find when you get to the room, and one of you will be a host in the room so that you can handle all of the various pods that will be there. So these are the lesson options. So it's going to look like this. It's, when you get in your breakout, it's going to be a tiny little pod, but whoever is the host is going to expand it, and these are the lessons. I just randomly picked these for you, and they come from a site, and the site is the first link. EFL lesson plans, the Internet TESOL Journal. There are about a hundred lesson plans there, and people have contributed them and made that something they wanted to share with the world. And if you may see your Sorry, Lynn, you have to get going and not just talk. Contribute. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I just want to explain what happens so that when they go into the room, they know what to do. Otherwise, they'll have questions for me. So what you do is you click on the lesson. I'd like you to spend no more than three minutes choosing which lesson you would like to do. And, and then you can work on exactly. the lesson. Sorry, I didn't really right. get it of okay. all this. That's it. Of what to do what exactly. Yeah, or that's Anybody the else instructions it? write it in the text chat right here. what we're supposed to do through all of the I'm sorry but this is what you're supposed to do right here where it says breakout instructions it says discuss in your group how you might flip this language lesson following the steps of SOFLA uh -huh. pay special attention to these issues and I just talked about the issues so that's the task in red Discuss in your group how you might flip this language lesson following the steps of SOFLA. So you're going to take a lesson that's a traditional lesson for language learners, and you're going to create a SOFLA lesson out of it. You won't have time to do a complete job of this because this is just a conference presentation. But I'd like to give you some time to work together as a group. And this, this, these instructions will be there when you All get right. into the room. The instructions are always in the room. Okay? So we're going to send you away now. All right? We're going to send you to the room you chose. All right. So room one. Room two. Room two. Room three. Room three. And room four. And if you did not choose a room, uh, let us know. Uh, we only have one person in room one. Would you be willing to go to room one? Somebody, please. Ahmed, would you like to go to room one? Learning technologies? Is that okay with you? Do you want, oh, you're telling me you can't. No, you're not going into the room until I put you in the room. Giovanna Coloni is going to go into room one. Okay. So sometimes I randomly distribute people. In this case, I'm trying to put you where I think you would most go. So Zaylene, I'm putting you in breakout, breakout two. And uh, uh, Peter Cole is alone in breakout one. So I'm going to put some people in, I mean, breakout four. So I'm putting the rest of you in breakout four so that we have groups. Okay, so we're going to start the breakouts. Bye. Enjoy. I'll call you back. It'll go fast. I'll try and call you back in about 15 minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> So 
So <laughs> we decided to use uh, TED-Ed to create an activity, and we would assign students um, to watch the videos in advance, and then when they come back in, we could split them in groups and have them talk about it to keep them accountable. They could take notes, like briefly, what to talk about, maybe what other people suggested, um, and when they come back, they could share and maybe kind of see, um, you know, what they have, if they have the same ideas, different. Um, Do we have sandbox? I'm not sure what sandbox is. Sorry, a little louder. Yes. Yeah, I see that we also have sandbox. I'm not sure what sandbox is. Um, some of the people in our groups did not have mic, so I had to type <laughs> everything. Oh, you mean in the chat? Well, okay, but we get the gist of it in the white on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. So you found that you were able to transform it to an online, uh, an online lesson using the steps of SOFLA mm -hmm. and thinking about synchronous, asynchronous, and what to do when you're with them, start discussions in small groups, followed by the whole group share, taking notes, similar to what we're doing, you can do that, right. And the TED talk would be the, or the TED, the TED Ed would be the focus, the material from TED Ed. Great. Okay. Did you want to chime in, other members? No, I know that nobody, it's not to finish, it's a demo. You're participating in a demo just to show you the steps. So this is the next step where we share out. So thank you, Group 1. And if could you, anybody want to comment on Group 1 or put something in the chat? I think they did a great job here. Um, for a first time looking at a lesson that they never saw before, trying to turn it into a SOFLA lesson. And if you're looking at this board, you will it will be available to you. Any of the boards, I'm going to share them all. I'll rearrange things, and everyone will know this was this lesson, and this is what they did. So I'll put the link to the lesson they chose and everything. Okay, thank you. And now we'll go to... Uh, and you notice that this just happens to be the way we do it in Adobe. I'm sure you could do this in other uh, applications, but here's white. Here's the whiteboard from, oh, well, group two did more um, talking than uh, writing, but it looks like you did a reading lesson. It, do you know which lesson you, what lesson you chose? And could somebody from group two talk to us about, uh, you talked about teaching reading. So how do you teach reading in a SOFLA model? How would you go about that? Do you have ideas to share? That would be uh, Ahmet and Marina. Do either of you have a webcam and a mic and want to share? It's OK if you don't. That's fine. It's not an obligation by any means. But if you want to share, this would be your opportunity to talk about your interest in teaching reading and how you would go about the reading, teaching reading. So anybody from group two wish to share? Okay. Uh, I have seen, just to give you an example, I have seen teachers who uh, make a video of themselves for reading skills such as highlighting or circling. If they want to show students certain strategies, they can make a video of that strategy uh, and then ask the students to use the strategy on a, a reading passage to bring to class, and then they can discuss that other passage after the teacher has modeled the reading strategy. So that's just an example. Okay, somebody puts here. Find a copy of, and read an article. Okay. Oh, here it is. You've got it. Okay. Wow. There it is. Oh, Gordon Alport. Ah, my favorite. Oh my goodness. Somebody took, you took uh, Prejudice and the Individual. What group were you? This is cool here in the chat. It's Marina. Oh my goodness. So you did all this. You did all this. <laughs> you, uh, you devils. Okay, so you did all this. And I'm just, what I'm going to do. Oh, they did a whole lesson. Look at this. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. 
I'm very excited. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, because you use the chat, and it's kind of small now, but I will fix it so we can really see it. But everyone can look at the chat and see what they did. This is so impressive. I was hoping someone would take that lesson. <laughs> so this is a lesson on prejudice and working with Gordon Alport, if you're not familiar with his scale, going from friendly to hostile, it's, it's a fantastic teaching point for our students, and I use it in my class. So uh, I don't, in the interest of time, you know, but just to show you, I just want to make this big enough so people can see it. So take a look. I think they don't have mics or they would talk. Marina, do you have a mic? Um, Ahmed? Either of you want to talk? Everybody just read it then. Okay, this is great. And notice that they included the, the uh, pre-reading activity. In other words, we're, we're going to do, that's our next task in a, in a minute. We're going to leave this and we're going to go to uh, previewing what's coming next, which is what really is kind of like step one almost, because you're previewing where, where they're going to go when they go to Alport. So this is, this is wonderful. When I post this, you'll have a great example of what SOFLA looks like for that lesson. And if anyone has something they want to add or say, I made it big enough for a minute for us to see. And again, in the real SOFLA, this would be a discussion of the whole class talking about each breakout room and, you know, we'd spend more time. But I'm just trying to give you the flavor. This is really about the flavor. But you guys are amazing. I'm just, I'm really impressed for people who've never used Adobe. I mean, I have to teach my students how to do all this. And a lot of you are catching on right away. So that's great. And now we're going to go to the next group. And that'll be, I think, group three. Um, thank you, group two. You didn't talk, but you certainly wrote, <laughs> which is great. Okay, so would you like to talk to us, Group Three, about what you did? Who's going to talk? Me again? Um, I'll I'll introduce the topic, and then you could talk about our steps, Kirsty. So we okay. uh, chose fun question rounds for children, and we decided rather than trying to split our time in the breakout room between uh, young learners, very young learners, and teenagers, we focused on teenagers. Okay, well, we started with uh, the asynchronous stuff, which is basically what would be the, the um, pre-task. So before they even got there, yeah. um, we could give them either do a quizzes or a Kahoot, which they could complete at home, which would sort of like uh, give them the basis of how to do uh, word order and question formation, a PowerPoint, which would then be um, quizzed basically, or using the thing that we used for before we came into into this session. Um, what, was it, what was it called? The, uh, the post-it or, or play, play post-it? What we, we play used? Posit. Play posit. Yeah, where you put the questions into the video. Yeah, so we could have a PowerPoint and then the, the questions Great. as they come up. Okay. So cool. then uh, the synchronous bit, when we want, want, once we're in the, the uh, big session all together, we could, would have a whiteboard which would brainstorm questions which we could use in an interview. So what questions would we use to interview each other? And the students would then brainstorm those, write them on the whiteboard. Uh, they would then use the questions that they brainstormed to then go into the breakout rooms and interview each other. Uh, once, they, once they would interview each other, once they'd finished that, they would come back into the main room 
and then they would uh, present one of their friends or you know something about that this is um, Juan, his, he is so many years old, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the others could give their peer feedback on that presentation. Um, and we didn't. That's as far as we got. We were then going to go <laughs> the next. Yeah, well, <laughs> sure. Maybe, no, but this maybe is, they could this then is... go and use the same questions and interview a member of their family or something like that. Right. Or somebody at the school. So, so this is a good example. Yeah, or someone yeah. at the school. Yeah. Yeah, and th this is an example of something that we've all done something similar, but we. But can you really do it online? Yes. yes. You can, and and you can do it with not wasting your time synchronously with things that can be done asynchronously. You know that's the key, is getting those things out of the synchronous piece and using the synchronous for them to interact with each other and for you to clarify and lead them. So that's the principle, and you followed it. That's great. Thank you. And and again, this would be a time for other people to chime in and comment. And I just know that I'm conscious of the time and I want to make sure we get through all eight steps. Okay. Uh, is there another group? Uh, group four, I know that Peter was in there, but I don't see him anymore. I think he had it off. <laughs> it's okay. This wasn't what people expected. I gave the webinar already, so this is not me telling you about SOFLA. That's not what this is. This is doing SOFLA. Okay, so who was in this group? Breakout four. Is anybody here who was in breakout four? It says Marina, but Ahmet. Okay, Ahmet, can you yep. share with can us? Can you hear me right? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. Sorry, oh. there was a problem with my internet connection. Actually, I tried to connect two times with my webcam, but unfortunately, there is something wrong in here. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, the groups okay. are really great. Yeah, we are uh, a little bit not fruitful in here. We just have four steps, and there was some kind of sounds, uh, a weird sound between Peter and me. I couldn't catch it. And by the way, my son was around me, so I mm. couldn't understand what we're going to do, actually. So we just write as a student, shy student, uh, I mean, Peter, what are we going to do? They are waiting uh, something from us. Let's write something, so please forgive me. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. So you have reading is the asynchronous and prepare questions about the content before the lecture. Okay. And then collaborative and discussion activities would be the synchronous and have a leader and give them a systematic layout. Right. There you are. Hi. There you are. <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's good. Um, and then do peer corrections and use video feedback too, like Flipgrid or something like that, right? There are a lot of tools for that. Sure. Great. All right. Well, you came up with something. You might want to go to the site that I listed where there are about 100 lessons to choose from. They're wonderful traditional language lessons that can be turned into SoFlo lessons. So you don't have to start from scratch if you want to work with lessons that already exist. So this is great. So I think everyone got the idea. Um, the whole idea of this breakout was to give you practice flipping something that you would normally just teach uh, in an in-person way. And now you see how you can flip with a synchronous piece. The synchronous is so important in SOFLA. A lot of people flip, but they don't do synchronous. All right, so now um, we're going to go to the next step of SOFLA, which is I'm going to preview for you what the assignment is. So again, you don't have to do it, but if we were going to meet next week, <laughs> which I guess we're not, this is what you would be doing. So the next step is to examine online pedagogy. And what I do with my students is I show them, I, I'm not sure somebody clicking on the actual video, somebody's clicking on the links. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know what's... Oops. 
somebody started one of my videos. I, I'm not sure what happened exactly. Uh, please don't click on the web links right now. I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, people, people I'm not are sure what's happening. And they click on uh, people are clicking on web links. I. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Can you hold off on clicking these links and, and just let me show you first, okay? So um so <laughs> you're not you're not my students, so it's a little different. All right. So what I want to do is just very quickly show you how this step works. So this is about motivating the students, clarifying terminology, getting them ready to do the pre-work. So the pre-work is a misconception that best practice is to just send them start with the pre-work. You don't. You start with previewing what the pre-work is going to be, so they're more likely to do it. So this is actually going to be a video lesson, but it's not uh, here, it's just slides. But when you click, which you don't have to do right now, the actual video is there, which I did for Learning Revolution. It doesn't have questions built in like the one you did this time because we're just doing a demo, but it would normally have questions built in. I also put below it the SOFLA one, and I'm going to make sure Peter gets that because he was here before. That's the one I did on SOFLA, which is an entire webinar on SOFLA. I don't understand. Is, any, is somebody clicking these links? Because I keep hearing myself talking. And I don't really understand why that's happening. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, um, and, the, and the third link was to our Google form. You'll see that, the Google spreadsheet, which is the assignment. So I'm, I talk about creating fertile spaces, which is my mantra. And I do it with the four E's. You'll learn about the four E's. You'll learn about equity, enrichment, engagement, and empowerment, and how to create them in an online SOFLA course, okay? And basically, I talk in great detail about what do I mean by equity, access to instruction, the enrichment that's necessary to compete with what's out there to get them more motivated. And the motivation leads to engagement, which means they're going to participate. And all of this isn't just words. I actually go through each one in the video and talk to you about how they arrive at feeling empowered. We don't empower them. They feel empowered and take ownership. And um, I go through each one with how I provide, how we provide equity online, uh, and then I give a cardinal rule for each one. And it, I'm just going to click through the slides. That's all. And, and if I were teaching this with my students, depending on what was going on and how much time we had, I might introduce some terms to them, equity versus equality, or whatever it was that I want to do. Uh, so I'm just going to click through quickly. It's to give you an idea. Uh, and at this point, I say that I know there was someone, I think Ahmet said, my son was here. So with what I believe is that's really important to enrich learning. And what I do is I always say, let's meet your son. Hi. And instead of bothering, what happens is we enjoy and we get pets and children and all that. So that's another point I make in the video. You will see that. And then this is my cardinal rule for enrichment, providing options, so enrichment for one, poisson and poison or whatever, everyone's different. Um, and then enrichment is motivation. And then I give asynchronous options for engagement. And I talk about synchronous options for engagement, and all of this is in your pre-work that you're going to do for the next class, guys. Aren't you motivated to do it? Stay out of their way for engagement. Don't be in charge if you don't need to be. Engagement, participation, and then we get to empowerment. And everybody's different. You have your liaisons, your experts, your leaders. There's the SHAC. I talk about SHAC, which is the peer feedback piece. I talk about change agents and global citizens. All of that is in the video that you're going to watch for our next class or our next session or whatever, but it's hypothetical because we're not doing it, right? And then always be there for your students. It's really important. That's the cardinal rule. And that's what you're going to learn about. That's it. 
Okay, are you motivated to go and watch it? So that's what you're going to do. You're going to watch that, okay? And then the last piece, and we're going to probably finish on time, which I was aiming for, uh, which is exactly an hour and a half, which was 90 minutes. So this is the last piece where I give you the assignment. So this is the assignment. If you look up where it says assignment, see I'm just moving it around. So what you're going to do is you're going to view that video, online pedagogy, it's not just tech tools. You're going to pick one idea from each of the four E's and try it. Try and use it with your students. Do something for the equity, enrichment, engagement, and empowerment. I give you four or five ideas. Pick one for each air, each E. And then post your idea in a Google Doc that I created. I created a Google Doc. Okay, so um, that's the third. Don't <laughs> You don't have to click on it, but it's the third link there, a collaborative sheet with the four E's. So after you have tried some of these four E's, you can enter what you tried and share it with everyone and we'll, we'll crowdsource it, okay? So that's the assignment for next time. It's hypothetical. You don't ha obviously have not have to do it, but I invite you to do it because that's, that's the way SoFlo works, okay? I think you'll enjoy the assignment and you'll share with each other. So now we come to the last part of SoFlo, which is your reflection. So what I tell my students is, um, if you just say, this was great, I erase it. So <laughs> what you have to do is say, what resonated with you from today? All right, is there anything that you're taking away from trying, seeing how SoFlo feels? What do you think? Is it something you might want to try and why? What piece of it do you think you could take what, and have interest in? and everybody puts it on the whiteboard. And again, if you're not able to put it on the whiteboard, put it in the chat, which is fine. <laughs> and that is our workshop. And we started at 3.20 and we ended at 4.50. Well, that's my time. I'm not sure what time it is for you, but we did it in 90 minutes. <laughs> it was bumpy, but that's okay. It's a demo. And if you want to see the webinars, just look at the, the first two links. Those are the webinars that I did for Learning Revolution. So please, please put your reflection. And again, all the whiteboards, you were here, everyone who attended, we will send out everything. The recording, all the whiteboards, everything that happened during these 90 minutes, you will get even the breakout results. And that's what we do for the SoFlo model. And thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed it. Is this the point where we stop the recording, Len? Well, I think it's a good idea to give them a chance to reflect. Uh, and the people watching the recording will see the board fill up. And seeing the board fill up is part of the step eight. So maybe after everyone has put their piece on the board, then we'll stop the recording. That way the people watching the recording will see yeah. the reflections of the people who were here. So whatever resonated with you, please put something up. And for my students, you don't have to, for my students, they have to put their name because then I know they were there for the whole class. So they put their name at the sign-in and they put their name on the reflection. So thank you for sharing. Did everyone get a chance? We have one, two, three, four, five, six people who have posted. So I'm not sure how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, so seven, eight. Can you, can you see what, so what we write we'll because it's more. not proper? Okay, right now it's okay. Reflection.
Okay. All right. And if anyone wants to reach me, uh, I am very reachable. My name, Helene.Marshall. I put Lane as an international name, but my actual name is Helene. LIU.edu. LIU is Long Island University, so grab that. And now that you know me, uh, whatever you need, I'm here. And I'm very passionate about SOFLA. And you'll see that if you watch the SOFLA webinar. And I hope you enjoy the 4Es webinar, too. Those are the only two I've done. Those are my two webinars. Enjoy. Thank you very much. And I think that we'll call it a workshop. Bye. I can turn off the recording now. This is amazing. Just really amazing. Everyone tries to grab the link. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Eileen. Lynn, that the results were stunning. I mean, goodness me. Never expected so much out of this group. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Is it the well I don't know. My students would be laughing, I'll tell you. They'd say, Doctor M <laughs> What happened? <laughs> How okay. can we see the links that uh, you gave us for the um, lesson plan? It's a lot more fluid because of my students. It's okay. A lot of people had never been in Adobe. That was a big hiccup. Well, I, I find the results really impressive, to be honest. I'd never expected a complete lesson plan within a matter of 15 minutes in the breakout rooms. Well, I gave them the four questions to consider, and they were in a like-minded group with people that had that similar interest and they were given the lesson so they didn't have to sign them. Sorry for this. <laughs> no, 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 no need, no need, no Thank need. So it's cool. You know, yeah. it's professional development and whatever you okay. get is extra, Actually, right? Uh, this is extra. <laughs> I have cognitive surplus, I call it that. Cognitive surplus. I just give whatever you need. Uh, I'm here to I'll give it to you. I'll send you my, my, my comments surplus. about we, we, we you. Can look it up. Claude can you hear, hear Shirky. Yeah. <laughs> Lane, did you hear this? He's going to send you his comment in no, form no, of no, a no, video. No. I don't mean that. Uh, she, I mean, uh, gives oh, us wonderful. some kind of That's great. YouTube video link. So there is some kind of uh, before uh, technology, there is pedagogy thing. Uh, I would like to watch it and then try to send some more informative, I mean, uh, information to that because uh, I'm working on flipped learning and yeah. I have uh, some Thank scientific you. articles in scientific journals. So this is the first time I have heard of uh, SOFLA. Thank you very much. This was really very informative for me. Thanks a lot. Sofla's just me. I don't know anybody else. It's just me. I'm trying to get the word you, out there because I think it's any, a great article, model for online clips. Yeah. But uh, you have? Yes, I have articles. Yes, yes. I can yeah, give you yeah, anything. Sure. What is your email? Let's be in touch. I'm absolutely happy to share all my links with you. Everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, you can read all about it. All right, I've got it. I will be in touch with you. I'll send you the links to the articles. They're not, uh, I haven't, we're not talking about um, yeah, you referee journal articles yet. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. I need to. They're more blogs. They're more like blogs. Thank stuff. you very much again. If I'm too busy For this nice, nice presentation. <laughs> and hey, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank Anna. you. Lynn, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Okay, goodbye. I'm leaving, I guess. Mm.